So uh, we, are able, we are going to simulate class one restorations freehand. I prepared cavity, extensive class one. Uh, but the, the main thing when you do direct freehand is to have some kind of guidelines. So guidelines for us are natural landmarks, which are tips of the cusps and slopes. And we have it here. So uh, just to remind you, once we trap out carriers, before doing our bonding process, we have to take red diamond board and just to go perpendicular to the cavity to make uh, the enamel smooth. So we use really low speed for about 20, 30,000 RPM. See perpendicular, I do not do any bevel. Just uh, really, really, really perpendicular. So in this case, enamel will be smooth. And another thing which is also important is that uh, enamel prisms will be opened in a, in a, proper, in a proper way. Next, uh, I will skip bonding now so for, for the demonstration patient's case. We have to go for the etching, rinsing, bonding, and so on and so on. I will start directly with composite just to highlight uh, our main uh, task for today is choose to do a proper freehand layering process. So um, I will take some flow as the base just to cover dentine. Uh, yeah, in such a cases, I always use flow, and mainly for the such a cases, I use uh, so-called uh, bulk fills. They are very simple, they are very easy going, they can be used in uh, pretty thick layers, up to 3-4 millimeters, depending on the company. And it saves your time, so we, we, we make it. Yeah, then we do... Uh, one, by the way, when you apply these flow balls or bulk fill flow balls or whatever you apply it, you take probe, you make, uh, you cover all dentin with this, then you wait for about 10 seconds and then you light cure. Why do we wait for 10 seconds? It's because we have some self-adaptation ability of this composite resin. Then we light cure. Okay. Next, we take uh, composite. Usually I use body shade for that. In this case, I use Spectra Low Viscosity. Ideally to have for about one, 1.5 millimeters for, the, for this layer. And next, what we already learned, adaptation. So we have to pack, 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 make massage, everything. It has to be well adapted to the surface, to the floor, to the walls, uh, to the outline of the cavity. That's important. So you have to spend time for that because this really influences the, the longevity of your direct restorations. Okay, so we, we really, really, really spend time for that because that's Believe me, the adaptation of composite properly is way more important than fissures and then stains or something like that. So we have to go really uh, precise for that. And then let's say it's done. I mean, adaptation. Now we have to start making anatomy. But the best way to make anatomy is to remove excess of composite. And let me show you on the adjacent tooth. So what we have, we have tips of the cusps and we have ridges or slopes. You can see them because of the highlights. We have fissures between cusps from the buccal side. We have the same from the uh, palatal side. So basically, if you will keep your instrument like this one, like Packer, you keep your instrument on the tip of the cusp and you move it down to touch the slope, it will guide you exactly with inclination of the cusp. So uh, virtually, we divide our tooth into two parts. So that will be like our line that divides tooth for the buccal side and the palatal side. This line is matching the line on the adjacent teeth. So that's actually the thing that you have to also to, to think about and to see it. And then here, the tip of the cusp, the slope and I touch this line. So that will be my inclination of the instrument and cusp inclination for the tooth. What I will do here, the tip of the cusp, the beginning of the slope, this is the line. So I have my inclination and I just start to 
to follow uh, these uh, guidelines, these outlines, fascia between cusps, and I move this way. So basically, I do remove uh, excess of composite. I do not do layering now. I don't do any kind of specific anatomy. I just try to remove uh, excess by following the natural natural landmarks that I have on the tooth. Okay, so that's the, the process. Also, it may take you some time. This is the fissure between palatal cusps, palatal cusp, and it, it is oblique. It is not straight, it's oblique, because it's a, a part of the crista transversa. Okay, so look what we have now. Uh, once I just removed axis, I'm getting my primary anatomy. You see? Primary anatomy. So that's done just by the axis removal. And I can, I can tell you that the process of uh, occlusal adjustments will be minimal but i will do i will do my secondary and vertical anatomy so i take a very sharp instrument can be a probe explorer sorry or a special one so i will do my central fissure it's in the middle of the tooth here that's my central fissure i go all the way down till i touch the flowable composite this way then i move this groove up so that will be my fissure between two buccal cusps okay here is the oblique fissure between palatal cusps. So again, same way, I just move it to uh, the, the, till I touch the flowable composite there. I mean, the, the floor of the cavity. Then I move it this way. So there is a fissure here, distal. So I move it to the distal fissure. Then from this central uh, fissure, I move my instrument forward. Okay, let me zoom in. So basically, I have my secondary anatomy uh, performed, you see. Now we will work a little bit on the details. So from the central fissure, I will move a little bit distally. It's like a logo of Mercedes. Then uh, I will start doing secondary or tertically fissures here in the, in the mesial part. So that will be my... Uh, border for the cusp for the buccal cusp i move it also here a little bit then look what we have okay now we will work a bit more to highlight the uh, very important anatomy like uh, slopes of the cusps how do we do that it's easy with a with a packer so here is the tip of the cusp, okay? Look here, the tip of the cusp goes smoothly to the ridge and there is a highlight that you can really see. In my case, the tip of the cusp, the highlight, and there is no highlight here. So what I will have to do? Uh, so that will be my ridge here. So I will press composite from the peripheral aspect of the future uh, ridge. I'm not doing ridge, I just press on the peripheral side of the cusp and in this case you will see what happens composite moves to the center and now we can see the highlight already done if i will press a bit here on this peripheral aspect of uh, the buccal um, mesial buccal cusp i will even highlight this transition you see that now the highlight right Let me just repeat, move it. Yeah, it's done. To be able to do this technique, you have to have pretty stiff composite because there are some soft ones. So once you will bake a fissure, after five seconds, it will disappear. Okay, so the composite has to keep form. That's important for that technique that I'm showing you. So now here, the tip of the cusp, and there is a crystal transversa, one of the most important element on the upper first molar which is responsible for many functions. And one of the function is retrusive control. So same thing, I just press in the peripheral side of the cusp from distal and from the mesial. 
and you see that uh, you are getting your ridge automatically okay same thing will be done for palatal for the palatal and this small distal palatal is all, almost done we just need to make some slight uh, depression here and here and that's it yeah so you have ridges distal mesial palatal so this is how it looks like so the process is not very difficult if you know the guidelines so basically i'm not creating something i do not improvising i just follow the natural anatomy and uh, another thing that will be very helpful for you when you do these direct restorations uh, is to have like a picture of the natural molar, for example, that you would like to copy if you don't have a lot of landmarks. So that will also be very helpful. Okay, so uh, yes, we can light cure it. We can light cure it. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just tell you one thing. Look, by the way, when you light cure it, you can see the depth of the fissures. I would like to share with you one important thing because it's a class one and I use just the one layer of composite, which is very big C factor, which is bad. You know that? So that's mistake, right? When the C factor, a lot of surfaces of composite touching the, the, the walls and what during the shrinkage, you can get some debonding from, from some of the uh, surfaces, but it's not one layer anymore. It's almost one two three four layers why because i divided them during uh during layering so it's a four separate layers it saves a lot of time but once it's very deep as i mentioned uh, we had to touch the floor mm -hmm. now i have to fill it and then you can use stain if you want stain is actually the flowable composite that is stained with a certain colors or you can use highly filled flowable composite just to fill a bit of these fissures in order not to have a food infection of the for the for the patient. So that's this is how it how it may work. Okay, I don't I'm not a very very big fan of these stains because patients don't like to have these stains. So basically, I really can use uh, flow, highly filled flow with uh, with the same instrument that I I, I modeled my anatomy. But the same, the same way I do, I do use, if you want to use stains, it's, it's the same way. You just put some uh, stain into the, into the fissure like that. But I don't want to lose the depth. So first of all, I, I, I put some uh, stain or flow, it doesn't matter, here. And then I will take um, a brush or we can take micro brush for that. just to clean same way i will do if i would use uh stain for for that approach i don't know where is it, where the hair comes from okay so that's that's the thing see we still have fissures but they are not very deep as as before and there will be no complaint from the patient side for the uh food impaction by the way uh, if you don't like stains uh, you can use uh, op uh, not opaque but dentin shades for that you can like for example the, the restoration that you made was like a2 so in this case you can use a3 or a4 dentin shades so it will give you a little bit chromacity in the in this uh, fissure side and look a bit more 3d uh, more more uh, more nicer for the for the Instagram pictures, but it's still not bad, by the way. Okay, that's it. Let's check from different angles. Okay, good.